In today's review, we are taking a look into a new release from TT Artisans, the f2.8 40mm macro lens for APS-C size cameras. Yes, it's an APS-C size lens, so I took out my 6400 that lately just sits and collects dust on my shelf. And we'll go to an unboxing, spec talk, get some test images and videos and understand if this lens is made for your production. I went with my family in a weekend trip in Istria, Croatia and I tried my best to bring you some sample back and also to get some studio shots with this lens. So firstly, let's get straight to an unboxing. These days, TT Artisans delivers the lens in the standard black-grey box, with the lens imprint on top. Inside, there will be the 40mm 2.8 lens, lens cap, instruction manual, warranty card and lens cleaning cloth. Ok, so one of the first things that caught my eye is the winding lens cap. Actually, you have the winding in or actually to take a photo, wind it out and you could lose some seconds by doing so. So this lens it's not a ready to shoot lens because it's also full manual. So you have to actually take time and understand the lens more to actually shoot with it or actually to get a perfect focus because this is a macro lens and things can get fastly out of focus if you are holding this lens in your hands. I don't know why they went for this design, but there you go, this is what you get and what you get presented in the box. The lens structure is completely built out of metal. There are 11 aperture blades with the aperture from f2.8 all the way up to f16, but I will talk about it a bit later in the review. The minimum focusing distance with this lens is an amazing 3 cm, and this is when the actual challenge begins. Ok, so if you want to take photos with this lens at 1 to 1 ratio, you will get hard time if you don't use a tripod. So I would recommend to always use a tripod for the close distance photos or videos. And the other thing is that by doing so you will lose some light entering your sensor. Let's talk about that. Getting on the max focus ratio, you are actually also losing the light that hits your sensor. It's not that you are closing the aperture, but the actual glass element gets more distant from your sensor, so you lose lighting doing so. This lens will mostly work the best in a studio setting environment. You will have the time to set up the lights, the focus distance, and be sure that you illuminate the best the object of filming, before proceeding on the next shoot. When I tried to get outside shots at close distance, I had to really bump up the ISO to get manageable shots. The lens have 11 blades. And as you see, the lens focusing isn't internal, so it's extending quite significantly outside of the actual lens housing, and almost doubling the length of the lens body. Another thing to get noted. Let's get on some test shots that I took with this lens. On the widest 2.8 aperture, you will have a really thin line between what's in focus and what's not. And you can know that for an overall more focused image, you have to stop the lens down, almost losing the light and bumping up the ISO. Well, it's manageable and I was able to take some cool shots. As you get closer, you lose some more light, finally getting to a point to a grainy ISO visible image. I would recommend to use a flash with a diffuser in these cases. No matter what, I was able to get some sharp results even being at a wider aperture. This lens is also capable of shooting portraits and landscapes with no problems, with fairly sharp results and some minor chromatic aberration. But you will not get this lens for this type of shots if you are going for a macro lens. When translated to a more controlled studio shot environment, this lens starts to shine in all its budget beauty of under $150, with control lighting and things in focus. Even stop down a bit around 5.6 to get my perfect sweet spot for these test videos. I was illuminating them with the Aperture 200X Godox SL150 at almost full power with the Laofas and Godox 90cm shotbox with girds on it. You can get some banger shot, sometimes without hustle or sometimes with a lot of hustle, depending on how much ideas you put in your shots. Ok, so now we will be switching from my Zeiss 55 that I am filming on my Sony A7S3 
to the macro lens. And yes, I will put it in 1.5 crop, actually zooming 1.5 times on my Sony a7 III to match the APS-C size crop from this sensor. So you get an idea how it looks. And now we have the TT Artisans 2.8 40mm macro lens mounted on my Sony a7 III to get these test shots and actually understand how it works at crop mode, well, at actual zoom 1.5 mode to match the settings that I was using with the Sony A6400 and to actually compare it to the Zeiss 55 that I was filming the whole review. And this is just a test. This lens is okay and it's not an autofocus lens, it's completely manual. The aperture is 2.8 at the longest distance to infinity and starting to close up the focus object is really getting lower light hitting your sensor. I would say nothing to be excited, but if you are on a lower budget and you need to get the job done, this could get your job done. But just don't expect the value for more money that you actually paid for this lens. Yes, it's built like a tank and the 370 grams of weight will not struggle your small APS-C size camera body. If you have any questions about this lens, I will be happy to answer them in the comment section down below. And also you can find in the link in the description my other lens reviews that I made in the past. Thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe with the bearing icon to get notified every time I make a new video and see you on my next one.